Christ, is that me or they started shipping them in younger now? Or you were Mr. Sanderford and now before that? That's a scene from the Robert Yummy Sandifer story, a movie about Chicago made here in Chicago by up-and-coming filmmakers in the city's Rosen neighborhood. It's the writer and director. He's with us today, Shaquem Mathis. He joins us along with some of the actors in his film, Mackenzie Holmes and Robin Lee. Welcome, everybody, for coming in. This is... Thank you for having us. We appreciate this. 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, mm -hmm. a couple of months after, uh, over 20 years ago, this happened. You knew Yummy really well. Yeah. What made you write this story? I wrote this story because I wanted to invoke a spiritual response with his life. Out of Yummy's life, there was a lot of heartache and a, and a lot of pain. And with this story, we was able to create over 100 jobs in Rose and in Skokie and Rogers Park and in Everston. So out of his pain and his heartache, it was some kids who could have been Yummy. Now they're able to live a life that they, they would have been uh, living un unless they was taught or yeah, there was someone there to exactly. guide them. And, and is that what happened to Yummy? There was nobody there to guide him? Yeah, he was misled a whole lot, just like a lot of kids who are in, in the gang. So uh, out of this story, what I wanted to do was show the more human side of, of Mr. Sandifer and uh, what people d don't see as far as when they read the, uh, the articles and all they see is the violence and they see uh, the pain and heartache. I wanted to show uh, something, something a little bit different. I wanted to show his, his human side. Yeah, you know? it made national news that an 11-year-old was in a gang and was shooting and killing people. You used to hang out with, with Yummy, and you used to hustle, as you say, mm -hmm. at the gas station. Tell me what that was like. Yeah, uh, me and Yummy used to hustle at the gas station. We would panhandle. You know, people would come to the gas station, and uh, when they pull up to the gas pump, we would say, excuse me, miss, can I pump your gas for you? Can you spare some change? And, you know, we would do a little bit more, but I'm not going to elaborate on that. Right. Here. How does someone get that way? How do you get to the point where that's what you're doing at 11 years old? Well, um, not having any role models, not having uh, a strong household to be a part of, and um, society too. You know, so society plays a role in everything, how they look at uh, the kids in the neighborhoods, you know, the, the stereotypes to go along with that. And, and also uh, media, you know, what you listen to, your, your music, the movies that you see, mm -hmm. those play a, a whole lot. Does and, it? And, and raising a child, his, his uh, environment plays a whole lot. You know, what, what he sees, what he listens to, who he looks up to, and what he's living in. Now, you got out, because you were in a gang as well, just like Yami. You got out. How did you do it? Well, I wanted something different from my life. What made you want something different, though? Because you stay within the parameters of your neighborhood. What makes you want and know that there's something out there different for you? Well, um, fortunately, the people that I was influenced by in a, in a gang culture, the older guys I was influenced by, they was a little bit more level-headed, mm -hmm. and they taught me a, a little bit more how to be uh, a little bit more conservative, conservative about what I do and how to be more knowledgeable about what, what's going on in the world and society and the spiritual aspect that has to play in, in everything. You held on to this story for 20 years. It must have meant a lot to you. Yeah, yeah, definitely have. Uh, Yummy's been, been following me through my life for, for the last 20 years. You know, he's been like a spiritual guide for me. And that's why I, I did the movie and wrote the movie like I did. I made uh, Yummy a ghost following the uh, son of Craig Hardaway. And we just saw Craig Hardaway, Craig Hardaway yeah, in jail. Mm -hmm. Craig Hardaway Jr. Craig Hardaway Jr., he is now in, in jail. And mm -hmm. what uh, Yummy was trying to tell him in the story was, look, if you go down this road, this is when, what's going to happen. And, this is, this is what happened to me, it's gonna to happen to you too. And also revealing truths about his death to Craig Hardaway Jr.'s son. Mm -hmm. Showing him like, look, it, it wasn't just him, it was much more to this story. So I explained that through the whole Chicago Chronicle series uh, with Mr. Uh, Sandifer's life and mm -hmm. his story. And you chose Robin Lee and Mackenzie Holmes to play in your, uh, in your, in your mm -hmm. movie, I should say. And Mr. Holmes, you are from that neighborhood. Yes. You. Well, grew up there. Tell me about your life story. Well, um, I grew up in the Rosen neighborhood and uh, it was very rough. It was a rough neighborhood. And uh, when I was young, I hung out with the older kids and they'd say, uh, hey man, go over there and rob somebody. I said, man, no. But then they'd say, hey, no, if you do it, we got your back. So I did it. And I did it a whole bunch that night. I just was just terrorizing the neighborhood. So. I understand where Yummy was coming from. They was influ influencing me. They told me to do it, and I went and did what they told me to do. And they had my protection, so 
I just kept doing it until my father found out and beat me so bad, you know, I, I, I couldn't go it. down that road again. That exactly. was it. But I understood where he went because the old people and nobody around you to tell you nothing, and they tell you, go ahead and do this. I got your back. Yeah. And if you don't want to be no punk either, because if you don't do it, then they're going to treat you a different way. And you were so, lucky you had a father figure. I was just lucky yeah. I had a father figure. And Robin, you too from Chicago, but you say you yes. saw a lot of that too. Well, I had relatives that lived in the area who were also raising children and trying to keep the young men both discouraged from the gangs and encouraged to keep moving and you know be successful. But it was very hard. I remember this story as if it affected my family. Yeah. Um, I remember my cousin not allowing the kids to go out, not wanting them to go play. And, after that, after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it resonates to a lot of people. Now, you have since moved way mm -hmm. far north yeah. <laughs> in Skokie area, yeah. and you're trying to change things, aren't mm -hmm. you? You have children as well. What do you tell them? Well, uh, I tell them a lot. Mostly, I, I tell them about uh, colors and, and things like that, because they're only two years old. I have two mm -hmm. daughters. It's okay. Right you can't tell them too years. much yet. Yeah, yeah, but, exactly. But you want them to grow up in a totally different way, don't you? Exactly, and that's why I believe uh, it's my responsibility, along with everybody else, to influence the world that we live in because your kids have to live here, right. my kids have to live here, so we all must have an input, a positive yeah. input in what goes on in our society. And that's why I want to make sure that I have a positive role in my society, in my neighborhood, where there's a lot of uh, violence, there's a lot of poverty. So I want to bring my, uh, this was a part of a way of me bringing my uh, people up economically, showing them how to be entrepreneurs because my background as a felon, it was hard for me to to get a job, right. so I'm like, I'm gonna, I don't want to go back to that lifestyle, so I'm going to create my own outlet. Exactly. And not, now, not ask for no handouts. I'm you know? sorry, the three of you, and I'm going to throw this question out to the three of you, are, have things changed in the neighborhoods? Gotten worse, better? Will they change? Definitely worse. Um, there is a, a presence of, I'm sorry guys, of our men that's lacking mm -hmm. as far as standing up and being held accountable. Positive role models. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me, I, you know, I look at it different. You know, I always look at the glass half full. And I look at young people now, they're doing way more than we do, did. Really? They don't get their credit. They just talk about the people who are doing mm. violence. But there's a lot of kids out here going to nice restaurants and doing nice things, and they just don't get the credit. But yeah. there's a lot of kids out here. A lot of things have changed, and a lot of kids are sick and tired of all this gang banging stuff and they want to be somebody and even some people in the gangs are sick and tired of that stuff you know it's, it, it's some things that was taught in I call it street education mm -hmm. sometimes you got to get re-educated because right. you yeah. get this street That's like it. I wouldn't work at McDonald's if you don't work at McDonald's you ain't gonna get no check a check is better to, to know you're getting some money is better than to hustle and yeah, think you better. might get some money. All right. Thank you, Mackenzie, Robin, Shaquin. Mm -hmm. Where and when can we see your movie? Uh, you can see your movie. You can see my movie now. Okay. You can uh, go to MathisFamilyProductions.com and download the movie. You can also donate to the website. And we are continuing the Chicago Chronicles series with the help of the African American Family Commission, Michael Holmes, who is um, helping us a lot with, with creating more jobs yeah. for, for teens this summer. All right, thank you so much. Thank you all so thank much. You so thank much. you. And when we return, it's time for the annual Push Martin Luther King Scholarship Breakfast. We're going to tell you why this event, in honor of MLK, is so important and meet one of the program's proud recipients.